go plein air painting. But what is plein air? Well, it's a term that was popularized when the French Impressionists took their easels from the studio out into open air. And so plein air, on plein air, is a direct translation from French, would be in the open air. So there were these guys that went and took their easels out. Later on, there were American Impressionists, the Hudson River Valley painters were uh, some of those that uh, romanticized the outdoors, taking their easels out to the Hudson River Valley, to places out west, to places all around the world. Artists like Asher B. Durand, Frederick Church, Albert Bierstadt, um, I encourage you to look at their works, absolutely beautiful. And so, what about us? Um, can we take our easels out to some location that's beautiful, step out of that studio? I encourage you to do so. Um, there are so many beautiful places to go. Today, we're going to go plein air painting. A um, little tongue-in-cheek play on words. We're going to, instead of P-L-E-I-N, plein air painting, we're going to go P-L-A-N-E, plein air painting. So we're going to actually go up in a small single-engine plane, fly about 30 miles from here to an uh, iconic uh, feature um, called Pilot Mountain. has that raised rock ridge on top, kind of like if you've ever seen that old movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, uh, Devil's Butte, that was popularized from there. Um, so it's kind of a scaled down version of that. But I'm actually going to get in the airplane, go up and paint what I see from the air looking down at, at that uh, mountain. It's a beautiful spot, should be really nice today. So we'll talk later a little bit about how to do plein air, and I invite you to kind of stick out and watch the rest of the video so that there's going to be a link in there on how to do plein air painting. So if you want to, come with me. We're going to go to Sugar Valley Airport. Here we are at Sugar Valley Airport. Pull around to the hangar, see if we can get up with Todd. Before we take off and land, we'll have everything solid and stationary. Uh huh. And then, um, uh, and we'll do that well ahead. They call that a sterile cockpit. And then we'll be, everything will be quiet so that, I, you know, I can focus on all the things that are going on. Okay. <laughs> and then that's takeoff and landing. Then we'll get to cruise. We'll cruise around, um, paint some. If there is some kind of emergency while we're in flight, uh, which I've never had happen, but it does happen, you know, rarely. Mm -hmm. uh, the main thing that I might ask you to do is to open the door a crack. That, there's a little latch up there. Uh -huh. When you get in, you'll just flip that latch and then pull up on that knob and the door will crack open. Okay. And that'll be, I think that'll be the only thing that you'll have to do. You'll have a seat belt on um, and then we'll just land in the field. Oh, okay. Like All right, I think that's it. Okay, awesome. You're not going to be able to see the mist and stuff if we don't go see any. Okay. Clear prop.
Hi there. We're really getting around today, so we're now at my studio at the Arts Place in Danbury, North Carolina. Um, let's talk about plain air painting just a little bit. So, as you saw when we went up in the airplane, which is pretty unusual for plain air painting, but um, there are some things that maybe we can learn from that. Every place you go to, there's going to be some kind of different challenge for you. Um, in this case, uh, unexpected things. Um, I really didn't expect to be so uh, enclosed with the uh, controls um, right there at my knees. Was not, not able to set up any kind of an easel or anything. Had to just kind of work off my knees. Um, think about that as you're going out. What, what is it that's going to be your challenges? Um, what kind of equipment do you have? You know, there are uh, very specific uh, types of easels for being able to set up in the outdoors. Um, you don't absolutely have to do it any particular way, but there's various different uh, equipment that will make it easier for you as you go. So if you just set up someplace simple, just in your own living room, just thinking about how would it be if I was out there? Um, would there be wind? Um, you know, what kind of things am I dealing with? Quite often what I tell students that are first starting out is, um, think about it like a hiking trip or a camping trip. Uh, how long are you going to be out there? And so the equipment that you're going to need will depend on what is the terrain like, what's the weather like, what is the expected weather like. That's really important, right? So um, sunscreen, water, comfortable clothes, are my clothes going to be warm enough, cold enough? You know, if it's uh, cold, um, it may not be particularly cold. It might be, you know, 40, 45 degrees. You're used to coming and going in and out of those temperatures, feel very comfortable, but stand out there for two hours in one place, you know, painting on a painting, and you may find that um, you get really quite cold. So I always tell people, make sure that you dress in layers, overly warm you can always peel off but once you get cold and you start shivering you're gonna have to go home and get a hot cup of coffee or something before you're actually gonna warm up again so think about those kind of things what kind of equipment uh, umbrella um, you know am I gonna be under a tree you know am I gonna be out in an open field is it really sunny those kind of things are very important now another thing that you might want to think about is the light. So if it's, uh, I, I like to say this, I, I like the light to be somewhere between 15 degrees off the horizon up to about 45. So if you're talking about morning, um, somewhere between uh, generally about 8 o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning, that gives you three hours. Um, but if you start um, you know, at 11 o'clock, um, by the time it gets to 1 o'clock, um, the light is so, you know, over top of you, you know, and it, it, you want to make sure that the lighting is coming in from the side. Um, if, if the scene that you're painting is face lit, um, it really washes everything out. If it's completely in shadow, so the light's coming from behind, People love to paint, you know, um, uh, sunsets. And sunsets silhouette everything in the scene. And, uh, you know, sunsets can be beautiful, but they're really quite challenging, actually. So um, I would say start now. Try to get your lighting coming in from the side. Um, start out in the morning. That way, if it takes you a little longer than you thought, you aren't fighting the light like in the evening. Evening light is good too, but um, sunsets. <laughs> so you, you have to be you know ready for that. Uh, Monet used to you know think about the lighting in these terms that um, if uh, every hour or so the lighting had changed so much that it's really not quite the same lighting anymore. So he would um, start a painting at 10 o'clock and finish at 11, 
you know, uh, not finish, but, you know, take it down off the easel at 11, come back to it at 10, between 10 and 11 the next day. And so he might have a painting that he started at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m., you see what I'm saying? And so um, lighting really changes a lot. Make sure that you aren't, the plain air term is, chasing the light. In other words, um, as you paint your painting, always keep your shadows in the same place. Don't, don't keep extending them out. Don't keep changing the light. If you paint at 10 o'clock in the morning, you're not done until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You may have shadows going this way that you started in the morning, going that way that you start at 2, you know, finish at 2. So uh, be careful about uh, what happens with your lighting. And the last thing that I'll say in this video is composition. Um, think in terms of you know, some kind of classic compositions. Um, think about um, not just painting a painting, but looking at that scene and making sure that what you choose, take your time, um, do some sketches. You know, it only takes you a minute to do a few little sketches. Make sure that the composition that you're getting is interesting and worth painting. Because you may get halfway through a painting and realize, you really just don't have a lot of energy for this because it's not too exciting. So make sure that you're painting something that gives you some energy because if it does, it'll give someone else some energy too. Okay, well, if you liked that, um, keep watching. There's going to be a link for another video, a how-to video on plain air painting, specifically about how to do plain air painting. We'll go out a little bit and do a few things so that you get a much better idea. These were just a few pointers. Um, and then uh, also check out the link uh, for my website. Um, uh, please go to my website and look at my art um, if you can. Um, help, you know, every little painting that sells is really good, you know, and uh, helpful um, so that I can keep doing things like this. So. Um, my name's Craig Richards. Thank you for um, watching the video. Click the link. Thanks. Bye.